I'd like to welcome everybody to another episode of Popular Biomechanics for Kids, where our sole focus is to try to reduce the heavily lopsided ratio between those who actually know how to promote the response that they're there to get when they go to the gym, to those who have no fucking clue what they're doing, but are very good at making themselves tired. I'm your host, Ben Halsell, and this is the Praise Be to the Raise episode, because if you kids want godlike shoulders like cannonballs, or maybe boulders like you've seen chasing after Indiana Jones, then you might want to include raises into your strategy. So we'll do a quick review of the universal law of levers and take a look at the biomechanics of raises so you have a better idea of how to do them to maximize your return on investment of time and effort depending on what it is you want to get from including them in your strategy. Quick review, universal law of levers. we got the lever in the direction of resistance. The lever is the bone that your muscles are pulling on. In this case, it's going to be your upper arm bone. Direction of resistance is whatever way the resistance goes if you were to let go of it if you're doing an exercise. If you're holding a free weight, it's going to go down because of what we call gravity. When these two variables are parallel to one another, that's an inactive position. The muscles don't have to do any work to overcome the resistance. When they're perpendicular, it's a maximally active position. That's when the muscles have to do the most amount of work to overcome the resistance and do the exercise. If we take a look at the diagrams, we'll take a look and see that RPCA there, Rudy Poo Candy S, who represents the 99.9% .9 of people who have no idea what the fuck they're doing but are very good at making themselves tired. Today it looks like he's doing shoulder raises. In the first diagram, looks like he's trying to do a lateral raise. We'll notice that the direction of effort opposes the direction of resistance when the upper arm is parallel to the floor. So it doesn't matter what type of raise you're doing, if you're using a free weight, when your upper arm is parallel to the floor, the muscles are going to have to do the most amount of work to overcome the resistance. But the shoulder joint is one of the most versatile joints in the body. So depending on where the lever is in relation to your torso will determine what part of the shoulder is doing the most amount of work. If we look at these other two diagrams, what we'll see is Rudy Poo Candy ass raising his arm to the front of his body, slightly to the side and then fully to the side. What's going to happen if he does this is he's going to increase the demand on one part of the shoulder at the expense of the rest. So if he raises his arm to the front, that's going to increase the demand on the front part of the shoulder at the expense of the rest. If he raises his arm to the side, that will increase the demand on the side part of the shoulder at the expense of the rest. Now the relative angle of his torso will also determine which part of the shoulder is under the most amount of stress. If he's standing fully upright, the front and side delt are in the best position to directly oppose the resistance. As he starts to bend over, the rear delt is going to be more responsible for pulling on that bone, the lever, against the direction of resistance as it's more responsible for the direction of effort the more you bend over. Other things you might want to be aware of is that internally rotating your arm will place the side and rear delt in direct opposition of the resistance, while externally rotating the upper arm will place the front delt in direct opposition of the resistance. So what does all this mean? Well, if you want to maximize the demand on the front deltoid, you're going to want to perform your raises in an upright position with your arm going to the front of your body in an externally rotated upper arm position. That will increase the demand on the front deltoid more than anything else at the expense of the rest of the shoulder. To do so for the side deltoid, you do your raises upright, raise your arms to the side and internally rotate your arm and to increase the demand on the rear delt, you want to do your raises bent over with your arms starting in the front of the body being raised out to the side and the arms internally rotated as well. So if you're going to include raises into your strategy, which you might want to do if you want your shoulders to be the size of fucking cannonballs or boulders that chase after Indiana Jones, you're going to want to know how to increase the demand on certain parts of the shoulder at the expense of the rest, depending on where your strengths and weaknesses lie. If you like this information, feel free to share it, pass it forward. Let's start to bring down that heavily lopsided ratio of people who don't know what the fuck they're doing, but are so good at getting themselves tired and increase the amount of people who actually know how to promote the response that they're at the gym to get in the first place. You like the information for yourself? Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I will keep bringing it.